I'm going to show how I've been moving existing code heavy applications into NADN and Superbase. Superbase being a part of this because I'm using it to manage events and trigger things, and you'll see in a moment. And then NADN, of course, to eliminate the code so that a code heavy framework would then stop doing all the coding in there and trigger this other system to do all the code or do all the automation, no code. And it's been going really well, so I want to share it here. So let's look at this really quick. So basically I'm saying if you have a code heavy framework, anything in the past I've used to build applications with MySQL being the center of that in PHP. And I want to start not coding in those systems, but it just it's not that easy because you're in this system and it has its own kind of way of doing things. So what I'm going to introduce to you is, you know, how I move the processing out of that system. So in my case, and it's this will apply to any system, but I'm just showing you how I do it. And the particular class in that code base now doesn't do the work, it triggers the work to be done. And then that trigger puts a row into the Superbase system that is external to it, and it triggers NADN. And in doing so, NADN can then process that request because it knows how to do it, as we'll see in a moment, because that workflow says, oh, I know what this is, I'm going to go do something. And it communicates back and forth to the code-heavy system. So what we open up to, as well as other systems that can now integrate into our code heavy system or our core system, whatever you want to call it, without more code. So now you could come in this way and start getting, or N8N, and start making Slack work or Stripe or Shopify or HubSpot without the code. And so slowly your energy, your work, your developers, whatever, who, whatever you are as a business owner, you stop putting time into this and you start putting time over here. And that's where you start saving time later on. So let's step into this one kind of thing at a time. So here we have a code heavy system and I'm not gonna give an example of the code, but I'm just gonna give an example in this case of a code heavy system that is a CMS. And it has content and it has tags. And every time we add new content, we want to tag it with AI. So what we're going to do in this system is say, okay, the code heavy system is going to then make a request to the, to the, to the, basically to put it into Superbase. So as you can see in Postman, the code heavy system could say, okay, I'm going to go start this process. And all it does is it will say, okay, I'm going to talk to this API we now have, because there is a whole API here in this particular concept. Let me zoom in. And this API says, okay, you want to kick off a process or you want to get the status of a process or you want to cancel or you want to check or get all of them and so forth. And so as we kick off this process, we can then see the other things happening like tagging. And I'm going to run this for you. I just want to go over it first. So in Postman, it just represents a curl. So any application you're using can do an HTTP request. That's all this is. And it's sending it over to this other system. Now, there are libraries for Superbase. Your code-heavy system could just put it into Superbase with their libraries. But I used NA then to make the API because this other system just didn't have that feature to do that easily with Superbase's library. And I didn't want to do direct database integration there for whatever reason. It could just get tricky. It's just more code on that side versus an HTTP request. So again, that system is very much just about the code-heavy system is just about I need a class that just says I just need to talk to this automation system, this new system we have, and I don't want to make it too complicated. So again, I just made a simple AI made it service class that would just do HTTP requests and send data over, and that's it. It has the config to know where the NADN is, where the API is basically, and talk to it, and then how to monitor things. Really simple stuff. Now, at that point, the the table is written to Superbase. It's really as simple. So we write a row to the process tracker. And that's where the new system of automation and doing all this stuff, the no code flow happens. So all I did with Superbase is I registered that particular 
workflow that's going to solve this problem. So I made a workflow called tag content. And this workflow is going to take the incoming request and tag it. So I took that particular URL and I just put it into my Superbase as something that's listening. So I say example tagging when that thing gets an insert, when this table gets an insert, I want to listen to that. Okay, stuff I've been doing in videos for a while now. And when this particular workflow, because there could be 10 workflows doing different things, when this particular one gets it, it says, hey, do I care about this? Is it an insert? Yes. Is it pending? Yes. Is it a step of tag content? Because here we go. If it's a step of write content or generate content or review content, it doesn't want to do anything. It's not its job. I have another workflow for that. Even better, I can then say, hey, my step is done. What's the next step and trigger that? So this becomes how you can really chain things together. Now, in this very simple case, we're going to say, okay, you're, you want me to go tag this content. So we have some content here. I'm going to start the process. And there's a body. Let me see if I can find this. Here we go. So I'm saying, hey, go tag content. That's what I want to trigger. I'm going to set it to status pending because it hasn't started. But the tagging content system should be changing this. And I didn't here. I'll show you in a moment. So that the UI can pull and see what's going on. And we have web sockets too, but I just didn't want to complicate this. And then the source ID becomes the thing that the you'll see in a moment. It knows where it cares about the content. And then we could reply to a user. We could send a message in a Slack channel. It just goes on and on what we could do with no code. So now if I throw this at the system, we can then check on the status of that particular request. So now you can start to see the API doing a lot of different things. So in this case, when it got that, oh, there's an error. We'll look at that in a moment. When it got that request, it said, okay, I have a request. Let's debug it in the editor, and then we'll go look together. I have this request. It just came in. It's an insert ID, sorry, yeah, source ID one, and it's tag content pending. And then it says, okay, yeah, I care about those things. Pending, tag content, insert. Okay, so it's going to keep going. Otherwise, we just ignore it. Now it's going to take that source. Oh, here's, here's where I say, okay, go get the content based on that source ID. This workflow knows what to do, and that's okay. And it talks to that system's database, and that's okay. So I'm going to now go get that content, and let's see. It's some fake data, so don't worry about that. And then we say, okay, go get me tags from our tag database. So I made a fake tag table with N8N and our AI, and it just gave me some fake tags and some fake content. And it says, okay, go figure out which tags might work for this. Now, it returned all these tags, and then I said to this guy here, hey, this guy's giving you some tags. Go make some structured content out of it. And here, I see why it messed up, and I'll... This is all about structured content. So I basically say, hey, give me structured content here. And I didn't give it enough information. Okay. So I had that error, but I don't want to get into structured content. What I want to show here is that, yes, it was listening to that content coming in. And then it did the tagging. And then it saved it back to the database. So now, imagine all of this now is not in code. So I'm able to say, okay, this is, and this is simple. If you did this in code, there's a lot to support there. And the agent is that model will change. It will depreciate. It will be made better with 4.0 or 4.1. So now we can go in and change things without changing a whole bunch of code and everything. So there's a lot of wins here overall. But back to the real point here is we get to this place where we were able to take the complexity of that code, that process, move it over to here, and then have N8N do the work. And at this point, the, I'll keep calling it the code-heavy system or the external system that we're trying to get the code out of or stop coding, can either pull for updates or it can use WebSockets. Because Superbase does have WebSockets, so if your system integrates with that, then great. So it's just a nice way or an easier way to say, okay, I need to update the user in the user interface because we didn't in this case we didn't use slack but we could have it just goes on and on what this allows you to get out of that old system or that i'll say old that code heavy system into an automation system like n and n and then into a system that allows you to do less code and also more ai more easily
All right, that is the gist of it. I'm going to post, there's always a link to my forum. So you can start going to the forums. It's five bucks a month. You get access to all this stuff. And I will share some code there and workflows in the repo. But honestly, I, this has been working. And so now I go from having to code inside these systems to just making that stuff happen out here. And this helps with the team because we can all jump on things, fix things, work on things, build things. And we're not really stuck in this kind of other paradigm of just building all this code that we have to support later on. All right, I hope that pattern works. It's not that niche. This is happening a lot more with my customers and with other people I talk to. And again, join the forums, ask questions. I will give you personal answers to your questions. So it's like getting a consultant for five bucks a month. I'm there every day. And if I see questions during the day, I spend about one or two hours there sharing, but more importantly, responding to questions. All right, thank you.